Um, I'd like to go ahead now and introduce our uh, other keynote speaker for uh, this opening session. Um, and uh, his name is Imad Susu. He's a uh, vice president in the uh, software and services group at Intel. And uh, he's been the general manager of Intel's open source technology center uh, group ever since its inception uh, in 2003. So that's a, an impressive track record. Uh, the OSTC has done an awful lot of good work over the years. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about uh, the opportunities and challenges uh, in industrial IoT and uh, how secure end-to-end -end solutions uh, will help drive that market. So please join me in welcoming Imad. Hey, good morning. Um, hey, welcome to Portland also. It's, it's actually nice to be, to actually have to only drive to a conference and not, um, and not uh, to fly. So um, uh, if you came from California, nothing changed. It's just raining just as much in California, as much <laughs> down there I hear. OK, so um, what I want to talk about today is um, I want to cover um, few open source projects um, that, that I think and uh, we at Intel are focusing on uh, that we think are important for, uh, for IoT and they're important for the success of IoT in general. Not, this is not just an open source uh, comment, but uh, a comment about the success of, uh, of, uh, of IoT in general. So. Um, um, uh, think, of, think of my short talk as, as an ad for a few open source projects that we uh, really, really care about. So, um, so with that, uh, just a, a bit of uh, background. Um, so, uh, so we know, and, and most analysts would, would agree, or there is a certain amount of consensus that there's going to be some 200 billion sensors and 50 billion or so devices that are connected. And, and these devices are going to form um, uh, uh, quite a bit of new usages. And these new usages are going to create new ways of doing things, whether it's uh, uh, smart hospitals or connected factories or, or uh, all sorts of new usages that um, uh, that are going to uh, happen because of w whether using some of these devices and sensors as, as a group, as individuals, and as, as uh, uh, just connected, uh, uh, connected devices to the, uh, 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 connected to the internet. Now, um, now open source, um, we think and we believe that open source is going to play a key role in, um, in the success of this project. And, and not only that, we feel and we, think, we believe that, uh, that, that open source is going to be a founding, uh, uh, founding and, and not from an operating system perspective only, but at all layers, open source will play a foundational role in the success of IoT. I mean, already, as, as you're probably all of you know, there are billions of devices that ship today that are, uh, that are based on open source. And, and the reason for that, and the reason that we believe that, this is something that all of us here in this room, we, prob we probably already know that is going to happen, but this is something that the rest of the world have discovered. And the reason for this is, is very simple, is that, is that generally developers and people who, uh, who are creating these products are finally coming to the realization that they really don't want to spend all their time rewriting another RTOS or rewriting for a sensor or rewriting uh, 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 some functionality, some system or some infrastructure software. So uh, it's obviously much cheaper to, uh, to participate in an open source project and do it correctly and then and, and use that technology and focus your work, focus what you want on the actual, uh, uh, on the actual business that you want to do. So, um, so, but we see, you know, for, for today, I'm going to focus my talk on, uh, on three areas that I think we have challenges. There are three areas where I think um, there are challenges um, 
to, uh, to get to that vision. And, and these are areas about open source project, whether you know, a project they exist, projects that are, uh, uh, or new projects, or things that we need to put uh, more effort in. You know, um, uh, interconnect, um, how devices connect to each other and connect to the internet is, is one of those areas. Second one is functional safety. And I'll talk about critical safe uh, Linux a little bit. And, and finally, some of, the, uh, some of the changes in infrastructure software, system and infrastructure software. So let me start with uh, um, interconnect. So, uh, so in order for all of, for this entire vision of, um, of connected uh, connectivity and these billions of devices, uh, for, for, for this to be useful, devices and sensors must be able to talk to themselves and to talk to the cloud. They must be able to discover you know, uh, uh, what's around them, what other devices are, are around them, what other sensors that, there, that there are there, and how to communicate with them. And, and in, the past, um, in the past, there's been uh, 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 the problem that we've had up to, up to probably just a few months ago is the, what I would call the extreme fragmentation. You had Intel and Samsung and Cisco and GE on one side and, and, and Qualcomm and, and LGE. And, uh, so you had this massive fragmentation where um, we were headed towards what I would call a, a, a complete interoperability. And that would make IoT fundamentally broken. Because if devices cannot connect to each other unless they are from the same vendors, then it is a problem. And if a device cannot connect to a sensor unless it is coming from that same vendor, that is also a problem. So the approach that we have taken, and, and, and thanks to a lot of effort by a lot of people, including the Linux Foundation, including uh, folks from the various companies involved, we've been able to bring this together as, and I would call this a first step. So, so right now, you know, what, what used to be all seen and OIC and, and all of these activities have merged together into, into one and absorbed, you know, efforts like UPMP and so on into one, into one uh, uh, one effort to, uh, uh, to create both a standard as well as create an open source implementation that, that I really do encourage all of you to participate in. And this is the IOTivity project under the Linux Foundation that we are, that, that all of us have, uh, have converged on. The, the good news is that um, there are already millions of devices that are shipping and will be shipping with this technology. So we already, there, there is already uh, 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 some foundation, but we do, uh, 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 there are also a lot of problems that we really need to start working on uh, and, and focus on more that is, you know, uh, in a lot of ways it's be is better in that these are technology problems that we know how to solve. Uh, uh, the, probably the two big problems that come to mind are security and interoperability. Um, interoperability is, 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 is as much as we uh, have done in terms of bringing all of these standards together, there are still quite a bit outside of that, that it is not, and there should never be a, an expectation that all of these devices will just, connect to, will just connect to each other without some extra work across you know, the, the vendors that are outside of these standards and so on. So this will take a lot of work and obviously security, and I'm not gonna go into the security aspect here, as you're talking about you know, all of these devices connecting to each other and connecting to the cloud, you can imagine the, uh, the amount of secu uh, security um, uh, uh, vulnerabilities that will be created that will need to be you know, well, well thought through and, 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 and resolved and remedied in, in some form or another. The, the second topic I want to talk about is, um, uh, is functional safety. So um, when we talk about autonomous machines, and by the way, this is not just about autonomous cars. Uh, this is about um, autonomous factories, autonomous robots, autonomous drones. All of these will need to have certain amount and adhere to uh, uh, what is um, what is recognized as the functional uh, safety standards. And the bar in functional safety is really, really high. And, and, and in the past, and the world really changed here, because in the past it used to be you string along, um, 
you know, 100 uh, microcontrollers. And you have these like microcontroller operating systems, and, and this is how things worked. Well, right now, what, what, what is really happening is that with, in order to support autonomous uh, in, uh, fully, like completely autonomous you know, a, a drone or a completely autonomous car. Uh, it's gonna take a, a completely functional system, functionally safe system that comply to the functional safety standards. And the bar, if you're familiar with this, and I do encourage all of you to, to familiarize with, uh, with some of these, uh, these standards, the bar is going to be really, really high. And, and meeting, uh, meeting that functional safety is going to take a lot of effort and a lot of work from, from, from all of us here. Um, and this is, um, when we talk about functional safety, um, it is not, uh, and I'm talking specifically about functional safety in a full, uh, uh, in a, um, uh, full industrial strength or whatever wo word you wanna call it, Linux basically. Uh, when you want to uh, take a look at uh, how you create a functional safe Linux, it's a much bigger problem than all of these small RTOSs that, that, that are today uh, f considered functionally safe and, and safe to use in, in these environments. So again, uh, it, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's not only code, it includes a lot of definition, a lot of uh, 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 documentation, a lot of uh, uh, visual inspection, and uh, what you can imagine in a functionally safe uh, uh, environment. So I do encourage all of you to learn about this topic, and I know there's a bunch of uh, uh, Intel people here that, that are familiar in this area. Uh, um, so last area I wanna talk about is, I wanna touch on, on a few projects that some of them uh, uh, you're probably familiar with. Um, the first one is Zephyr. So um, Zephyr is a microcontroller operating system. Uh, Zephyr can run as, in as little as uh, eight to 10 kilobytes, and it is meant for sensors. It is meant to do, uh, um, you know, for, for really small endpoints. And, and the, the, what is different about Zephyr is, uh, is that the way we structured Zephyr and the way we're looking at Zephyr is that we want that to be as broad as possible, supporting all the different hardwares with, uh, uh, with, with very, very strongly rooted in open source, with on the technical side having, um, uh, we, we, the way we're building it is, uh, I, I would say uh, almost in a Linux-like fashion, where we are looking upfront at how it is going to scale and how, you know, uh, uh, how much you can build on it. So, so Zephyr does support and you're able to add functionality, including networking, including, uh, including some, some file systems to it and so on, that, that it will enable it to uh, grow a little bit bigger. But at the same time, you know, the target, we wanna keep that the target in, in, uh, in, the mic in this microcontroller operating system as uh, uh, really, it is really for, for sensors. Uh, uh, Yocto, you're, uh, everybody is familiar with Yocto. Um, the, the big difference that we are beginning to do in Yocto is to create the specific usages. So uh, uh, we've always had this problem with Yocto where it's a great framework, it allows you to create the embedded Linux that you want and so on, but it had the shortcoming of it takes too much work and it takes a lot of expertise. So we, 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 we started what is called the IoT reference kits that are in Yocto which really creates almost a, a, a sample of, um, you know, a, a sample of like a smart home stack uh, and, and, and some of these uh, vertical usages. And uh, robotics is, is another usage that, that we, we are creating some of, the, uh, some of that work in, in, in Yocto. So uh, again, uh, it's really important to, uh, to grow Yocto beyond the framework and to start giving uh, people a more starting point and, and work on a bigger starting points for, for actual usages. And, and last but not least is a drone code. So um, a, a drone code and, and projects that are associated with drone code are really important. Things like uh, uh, robotics OS and, and many other projects like this are really important to mature to the, uh, to the level that Linux is, where it is, uh, where, where somebody can take these projects and use them in products. So um, 
uh, you will find in, in all of these projects, you will find, um, you know, there's the Yocto booth up, upstairs. Uh, in the Intel, uh, there's a Zephyr booth also uh, for the microcontroller OS. Uh, but also, um, it, you know, I really encourage you to visit these. Uh, in the Intel booth, uh, there will be, uh, there's a drone uh, area, uh, including the, the Intel drone board that I really encourage you to visit the Intel booth and take a look at these. Again, hey, thank you very much, and thanks for coming to Portland, and thanks for your good listening. <clears throat> thank you, Ahmad. Um, and now we're going to take a uh, short coffee break. Just before we head out, I just want to leave you with one last thought uh, as we start the conference. I heard something uh, just this last week which I thought was a, a really good uh, idea. I've been going to Linux conferences for a really long time. Uh, and I remember the first couple of years that I went to OLS. Um, if you're new to the experience, uh, you probably don't know a lot of people. Uh, we started ELC as a little boutique uh, event that you know, 150 people and it stayed that way for many years and, and we kind of got to know each other. So uh, some of us, when we come here, it's like kind of we're coming home, we're, we're meeting people that we see very often. If you're new, I would encourage you to make connections. This is a rare opportunity in your career to hook up with people who are doing the same thing, not exactly the same thing, and that's the beauty of open source. Uh, you can uh, have those hallway conversations uh, that will, you know, give you new insights into how other people are, are attacking problems. And so I really encourage you to kind of step out of your comfort zone. The saying I heard was, uh, there is no growth in a comfort zone, and there's very little comfort in a growth zone. So with that, uh, I encourage you to take full advantage of the sessions we've got prepared, but also make sure that you uh, meet new people and, uh, and get to know each other. And I hope that we have a good week. So the sessions will start at 10.30, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you up there.